By 1944, the US Army had successfully deployed the M4A3E2, known as the Sherman Jumbo. This was the Americans' answer to the assault tank problem that the Germans had solved two years prior with the Tiger I. These heavily armoured behemoths could smash three enemy defensive positions and emerge unscathed on the other side, ready to be transported to wherever they were needed next. The Jumbo was still a Sherman, however, and clamping so much extra armour to the vehicle was really pushing the limits of the original design. German anti-tank weapons were getting stronger, and the army thought it would be nice to have an assault tank that packed a little bit more of a punch than the Sherman 76mm. Enter the T26E5. The M26 Pershing was the army's brand new medium tank, and despite it being a lot better armed and armoured than the Sherman, it was still vulnerable to the high calibre anti-tank weapons American tankers were now facing in Western Europe. The T26E5 program involved increasing the armour thickness on the front of the M26 to make it as well protected as possible, while retaining the powerful 90mm M3 gun of the Pershing. Initial drafts increased the armour protection of the vehicle to allow it to absorb hits from the 88mm KWK-36 of the Tiger I and the 75mm KWK-42 mounted on the Panther. However, after the appearance of the Tiger II and its much more powerful 88mm, the KWK-43, which was also mounted in the Jagdpanther, Nassorn and Ferdinand tank destroyers, the army felt the need to increase the armour even further. The frontal hull armour was increased from 121mm to 152mm and angled at 46 degrees. The turret was even thicker, increasing to 191mm at the front and mounting a massive 279mm thick mantlet. This meant that the E5 would essentially be impenetrable from the front, even in relatively close range encounters with Germany's most powerful vehicles. In order to balance the huge mantlet and increase frontal armour, the sides of the turret were increased to at least 89mm and the rear of the turret was increased to 127mm. The turret shape didn't change, but the turret mantlet shape did. Adding a big chin to the bottom to avoid the shot traps that had been observed on the German Panther and rectified on the G model Panther vehicles. The E5 on paper looks like an extremely formidable opponent, as any World of Tanks or War Thunder player could tell you. And you may wonder why we didn't see hundreds of them deployed in the last months of the war. Unfortunately, the vehicle was stumbling into the same reliability and mobility issues that plagued its German counterparts. The unmodified Pershing already weighed 45 tons, and even at that weight was considered underpowered and sluggish. Adding an extra 5 tons of armour on top of that, without upgrading the engine or suspension, made the new vehicle incredibly impractical. Things like elevating the gun and rotating the turret were now difficult and slow, and the extra weight concentrated all on the front of the tank meant that the suspension really suffered. Torsion bars were breaking during testing, the transmission was having issues, the engine was overheating, the final drives were falling apart, etc, etc. Modifications made to the vehicle in an attempt to alleviate these problems didn't really help the situation all that much. After all, most of these issues were actually already a cause for concern on the standard M26, but obviously to a lesser degree. Before any significant improvements could be made that allowed the E5 to be deployed in Europe, the war had ended, so the project was put on the back burner. By 1951, the M26 itself was replaced in US service by the M46 Patton, offering the same armour protection with none of the mobility issues. This meant that the E5 never saw mass production or service. All 27 T26 E5 prototypes produced for testing were either used as ranged targets or scrapped altogether, and none survive today. As always, thank you so much for your support, and I can only apologise for the huge gap between this and my last video. Hopefully we can sort of be back to regular programming relatively soon. I'll see you then.